ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an app built by OpenAI. Using the GPT language models, it can answer your questions, write copy, draft emails, hold a conversation, explain code in different programming languages, translate natural language to code, and more or at least try to all based on the natural language prompts you feed it. Is one of the shiniest new AI-powered tools, but the algorithms working in the background have actually been powering a whole range of apps and services since 2020. So to understand how ChatGPT works, we need to start by talking about the underlying language engine that powers it. The GPT in ChatGPT is mostly GPT-3, or the Generative Pre-trained Transformer 3, though GPT-4 is now available for ChatGPT Plus subscribers, and will probably become more widespread soon. The GPT models were developed by OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT and the image generator Doll E2, but they power everything from Bing's recently released AI features to writing tools like Jasper and Copy.ai. In fact, most of the AI text generators available at the moment use GPT-3, and will likely offer GPT-4 as a next step. Automate GPT ChatGPT brought GPT-3 into the limelight because it made the process of interacting with an AI text generator simple and, most importantly, free to everyone. Plus, it's a chatbot, and people have loved a good chatbot since Smarter Child. How does ChatGPT work? ChatGPT works by attempting to understand your prompt and then spitting out strings of words that it predicts will best answer your question, based on the data it was trained on. Let's actually talk about that training. It's a process where the nascent AI is given some ground rules, and then it's either put in situations or given loads of data to work through in order to develop its own algorithms. GPT-3 was trained on roughly 500 billion tokens, which allow its language models to more easily assign meaning and predict plausible follow-on text. Many words map to single tokens, though longer or more complex words often break down into multiple tokens. On average, tokens are roughly four characters long. OpenAI has stayed quiet about the inner workings of GPT-4, but we can safely assume it was trained on much the same dataset since it's even more powerful. All the tokens came from a massive corpus of data written by humans. That includes books, articles, and other documents across all different topics, styles, and genres and an unbelievable amount of content scraped from the open internet. Basically, it was allowed to crunch through the sum total of human knowledge. This humongous dataset was used to form a deep learning neural network, a complex, many-layered, weighted algorithm modeled after the human brain, which allowed ChatGPT to learn patterns and relationships in the text data and tap into the ability to create human-like responses by predicting what text should come next in any given sentence. Though really, that massively undersells things. ChatGPT doesn't work on a sentence level, instead, it's generating text of what words, sentences, and even paragraphs or stanzas could follow. It's not the predictive text on your phone bluntly guessing the next word, it's attempting to create fully coherent responses to any prompt. To further refine ChatGPT's ability to respond to a variety of different prompts, it was optimized for dialogue with a technique called reinforcement learning with human feedback, RLHF. Essentially, humans created a reward model with comparison data, where two or more model responses were ranked by AI trainers, so the AI could learn which was the best response. Back to the neural network it formed. Based on all that training, GPT-3's neural network has 175 billion parameters or variables that allow it to take an input, your prompt, and then, based on the values and weightings it gives to the different parameters, and a small amount of randomness, outputs whatever it thinks best matches your request. OpenAI hasn't said how many parameters GPT-4 has, but it's a safe guess that it's more than 175 billion and less than the once rumored 100 trillion parameters. Regardless of the exact number, more parameters doesn't automatically mean better. Some of GPT-4's increased power probably comes from having more parameters than GPT-3, but a lot is probably down to improvements in how it was trained. It does not possess human-level common sense, 
and the model also lacks the background knowledge we have. This means that ChatGPT may sometimes provide nonsensical or inaccurate responses to certain questions or situations. Lack of emotional intelligence, while ChatGPT can generate responses that seem empathetic, it does not possess true emotional intelligence. It cannot detect subtle emotional cues or respond appropriately to complex emotional situations. Limitations in understanding context, ChatGPT has difficulty understanding context, especially sarcasm and humor. While ChatGPT is proficient in language processing, it can struggle to grasp the subtle nuances of human communication. For example, if a user were to use sarcasm or humor in their message, ChatGPT may fail to pick up on the intended meaning and instead provide a response that is inappropriate or irrelevant. Trouble generating long-form, structured content. At this time, ChatGPT has some trouble generating long-form, structured content. While the model is capable of creating coherent and grammatically correct sentences, it may struggle to produce lengthy pieces of content. Danger privacy issues. The use of AI language models raises questions about the privacy and security of personal data used to train and improve them. It retains the user's data and sensitive information, which can pose a threat if the data gets misused. There are also concerns about who has access to the data and how it is stored, processed, and protected. In simple terms, all your conversations can be stored and reviewed by human trainers to examine and improve the AI model. Generation of phishing emails The most significant danger of ChatGPT is that it can produce phishing emails in multiple languages. To hackers' delight, they can ask for a marketing email, a shopping notification, or a software update in their native language and get a well-crafted response in English. Generally, these emails are identified by typos and grammatical errors, but without those signs, it will be quite difficult to identify phishing emails. Biased content. In many instances, ChatGPT has provided racist and sexist responses. This poses a societal risk since young people or people who take ChatGPT's answers at face value might get influenced by its biased data. It's crucial to carefully consider the quality and diversity of the data including factors such as demographic represent other AI models have the potential to displace jobs by automating repetitive tasks such as data entry, customer service, and other everyday tasks. However, AI is more likely to augment human work and improve existing jobs, rather than replace them altogether. That being said, the displacement of jobs due to AI automation is a complicated issue that can cause economic disruption and impact several industries. Organizations must provide support and retraining opportunities for those affected by job loss during automation. While there may be job losses in certain industries, the overall impact on employment is likely to be more complex. This is because AI will also create new job roles in related fields. Plagiarism BARD BARD is a conversational AI developed by Google. BARD uses machine learning and natural language processing techniques to generate human-like text responses to various prompts. The model is designed to mimic the style and structure of human writing. In order to do so, BARD was trained on a massive data set consisting of text data and uses a deep neural network architecture, called transformers, to learn patterns in language, understand the context of the input text and generate appropriate output. BARD versus Chat, what's the difference? BARD and ChatGPT are both large language models developed using deep neural network architectures and trained on massive amounts of text data. Google developed BARD while OpenAI developed ChatGPT. Both models can generate human-like text responses to a wide range of prompts and tasks, including conversational chat, creative writing and more. What does BARD do? BARD is capable of generating contextually correct responses on a wide variety of topics including science, math, history, literature, and religion. One of BARD's features is its ability to engage in multi-turn conversations wherein the AI can maintain a consistent topic and persona across multiple exchanges with a human user. This makes BARD particularly useful for applications like chatbots and virtual assistants. Zero Obsidian 
Obsidian is a personal knowledge base and note-taking software application that operates on markdown files. It allows users to make internal links for notes and then to visualize the connections as a graph. It is designed to help users organize and structure their thoughts and knowledge in a flexible, nonlinear way. The software is free for personal use, with commercial licenses available for pay. Obsidian is built on Electron. It is a cross-platform application that runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, as well as mobile operating systems such as Android and iOS. There is no web-based version of the software, 7, Obsidian can be customized by adding plugins, which are also accessible from the mobile app. Obsidian differentiates between core plugins, which are released and maintained by the Obsidian team, and community plugins, which are contributed by users. Examples of community plugins include a Kanban-style task board and a calendar widget. Obsidian operates on a folder of text documents. Each new note in Obsidian generates a new text document. Obsidian allows for internal linking between notes and creates an interactive graph which visualizes the relationships between notes. Text formatting in Obsidian is achieved through Markdown, but Obsidian allows for the instantaneous previewing of formatted text. Obsidian's customer support is accessible only through email. The developers, however, have hosted an internet forum and a Discord channel where users can exchange solutions and ideas. Some of the key features of Obsidian include Some of the key features of Obsidian include Wiki-style backlinks, which allow users to create links between notes and create connections between different pieces of information. Multi-level bullet points to create hierarchical lists. Embedded images and other media. Table of contents, which allows users to quickly navigate through headings in notes. Plugin support, which enables users to extend the software's functionality with additional features or integration with other tools. The health app tracks and stores various health data and metrics, as well as clinical medical records for users with supported health insurers or hospitals signed up to the Apple Health Records program. Data is divided into several categories, activity, body measurements, cycle tracking, hearing, heart, medications, mindfulness, mobility, nutrition, respiratory, sleep, symptoms, vitals, and other data. Users with a connected Apple Watch will have their health information from the device automatically imported into the health app including their activity rings, walking and running distances, flights climbed, mindfulness minutes, sleep analysis, hand washing, environmental noise levels, heart rate, blood oxygen levels, and ECG measurements. Health data can also be logged manually or through third-party applications. Since iOS 13, Health has been capable of period and fertility tracking, allowing users to log their menstruation cycles and receive predictions as to when their next period may begin. With iOS 16, Apple introduced medication logging, which allows users to track the medicines they are taking and set reminders for when to take them, as well as alerting users of potential drug interactions. Both features are also available as standalone applications on watchOS devices. Medical ID profiles are also kept within the health app, which allows for key medical information to be easily accessed by first responders without the need to unlock someone's device. Users can choose to what to display in their medical ID, such as allergies, medications, blood type, organ donor status, and emergency contact details. As of July 2016, users on iOS 10 or later in the United States have been able to sign up to be an organ, I, and tissue donor through the health app.